Good morning everybody. In this video, I would like to focus on using contribution margin to make short-term decisions, or what we call a marginal analysis. This is being mainly related to our lecture 3. But let's remember that in chapter 2, where we discussed relevant costs for decision making, we saw that when deciding between two or more possible courses of action, only costs that vary with the decision should be included in the analysis. So only a relevant cost. This principle can be applied to the consideration of fixed cost. Fixed cost is not relevant in most cases in the short-term decision. This is because fixed cost element cannot be changed in the short term. In making these decisions, the short-term decisions, we should have at our key strategic objective, which is the maximization of shareholder wealth. Since these decisions are short-term in nature, wealth will normally be increased by generating as much net cash inflow as possible. Please remember, a marginal analysis only costs and revenue that vary with the decisions are considered. So what we call it relevant, cost or relevant revenue. Anything else will be, of course, considered as irrelevant. So in that case, we should ignore. This usually means that fixed cost can be ignored. Therefore, the variable cost per unit will be equally to the marginal cost, which is the additional cost of producing one more unit of output. But please take care. While marginal cost normally equal variable cost, there may be times when producing one more unit will involve a step in the fixed cost. If this occurs, the, mar the marginal cost is not just the variable cost. In that case, it will be include both variable and fixed cost. Marginal analysis may be used in four key areas of decision making, which are the pricing or assessing opportunities to enter contracts, determining the most efficient use of scarce resources, make or buy decisions, and finally closing or continuation decisions. So the magic keyword that we have to use all time when we solve those areas will be contribution margin. If our contribution margin is positive, I would accept uh, the offer. If not, I will refuse the offer. So all the time, remember, it's contribution margin. Let's now consider each one of these area in details. Before I start, I just would like to repeat the example of break even point. This example is, let's say that we have a company that makes baskets. The fixed cost of operating the workshop for a month totals 500 pounds. So this is our fixed cost. Each basket requires material that costs two pounds and take one hour to make. The business pays the basket maker 10 pound an hour. The basket makers are all on contract such that if they don't work for any reason, they are not paid. The baskets are sold to a wholesaler for 14 pound each. So the requirement, what is the break even point for basket making for the business? Just to remember the equation to calculate the break even point will be fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. Contribution margin per unit is the sales revenue per unit minus variable cost per unit. Here to apply, our fixed cost is 500 pound. Our sales revenue is 14 and our variable cost will be two pound, the material cost and the labor cost, which is 10 pound for an hour. And we need only one hour, so it will be 12. So 500 divided by 14 minus 12, so it's two. 500 divided by two is equal to 250. So that means if we decide to produce 250 baskets, our revenue minus our cost or our net profit will equal zero. This is just to confirm that if we produce 250, we will achieve zero profit. Now let's start with the first decision, which in our case will be pricing, assessing opportunities to enter contract. So let's now start with the first decision, which is pricing, assessing opportunities to enter contract. Remember our magic word contribution margin. If it's positive, I would accept. If not, I will refuse. So let's continue with the same example. So the company here has a spare capacity that its basket maker have some spare time and overseas retailer. So another customer has offered the business an order for 300 basket at a price of 13 each. So instead of 14, they offer only 13. Are you going to accept this offer or not? Again, the magic word is contribution margin. If your contribution margin will be positive, 
in that case I would accept because that means that this contribution margin will be used to cover more your fixed cost and any remain will be added to your profit so in that case let's apply this so the additional revenue the price that the offer for per unit will be 13 and the variable cost will not change it's still 12 per unit so in that case the additional contribution per unit will be one pound so that means every one unit we will sell it to so that new customer will contribute to our profit by one pound will be contribute first to cover our fixed cost by one pound then it will be added to your profit so 300 units more by 13 pound the price will add to your contribution margin by 300 pound if you'd like to check this very easily let's now consider that we use 250 if you remember when we produce 250 we achieve zero profit now, after adding the 300 unit with 13 pound price, I would expect that this zero will be increased to be 300. So let's see. Here, I added the 250, this is 3,500, and then added 300 by price of 13, this is 3,900, so in total, this is 7,400. Minus variable cost, which is 250 plus 300, so 550, time 12. So this is equal 6,600. So 7,400 minus 6,600, this is equal 800. This is our contribution margin. By the way, our contribution margin increased by 300. If you look at the previous one here, it's 500 contribution margin. Now it changed to be 800. So it increased by 300. So yes, every one unit I sell to that customer will add to my profit one pound. I decided to sell 300 so 300 times 1 is equal 300 so in that case our contribution margin increased by 300 this is will be used to cover my fixed cost so now we have fixed cost is 500 no change to fixed cost it's irrelevant so the net profit will be equal 300 this is for the first decision let's now move to the second decision the most efficient use of scarce resources if I have a scarce resource what should I do the magic word again is the contribution margin but now it's not contribution margin for the product but it will be the contribution margin for the scarce resource let's have a look at this example so a business makes three different product a b c we have selling price we have variable cost we have weekly demand unit so the market needs 25 units of product a 20 units of product b 30 units of product c the machine time per unit for product A, it needs four hours. For product B, it needs three hours. For product C, it needs four hours. The fixed cost is not affected by the choice of product because all three products use the same machine. So machine time is limited to 148 hours a week. So we have a scarce resource here, which is the machine time. The requirement, which combination of product should be manufactured if the business is to produce the highest profit. So as usual, our main target is to maximize our profit which would be reflected in the shareholder wealth so how to choose between them why because i cannot produce the three why i cannot produce the three products here this is the market demand let's ensure how many hours we need if we produce 25 units of product a each one equal four hours that need i need 100 hours for the second one 20 units each one needs three so in total i need 60 hours for the third one 30 units and the machine time is four so in that case i need 120 if you sum all of that we need 280 but the maximum is 148 hours only so i need to choose between those to maximize my profit so how can i do this again i need to calculate the contribution margin per limited resource so how to do this so here this is again the selling price which is given variable cost I calculate the contribution margin per unit which is 25 minus 10 equal 15 and so on the machine time per unit is 434 the contribution per machine hour will be three pounds 75 how to calculate this 15 pound divided by four hours so that means the contribution margin per machine hour will equal three pounds 75 for product a for product b equal four pound for product c equal two pounds 75 based on this the best would be product b so this is, should be produced first if i still have hours i will produce product a then i will move to product c in that case i will produce first product b 
Product B actually, the market needs only 20 units. Each one needs three hours. So 20 times three, that means I need to use 60 hours of my machine hours. The total machine hours is 148. So I will produce 20 units of product B using 60 hours. That means that the remaining hours will be 148 minus 60, which equal 88. 88 will be used to produce product A. Product A actually, the market needs 25, each one equal four. So I need 100 hours. But unfortunately, I have only 88. In that case, 88 hours can be used to produce product A. Product A needs four hours and we have 88. So the maximum that we can produce will be 88 hours divided by four equal 22 units. So I produce 22 units of product A. So this is will be equal 148 hours. Of course, that means that I will not produce the three remaining and as well, I will not produce anything from product C. Based on this combination, the net profit that I can achieve will be 20 units of product B. Each one achieve 12 pounds as contribution margin per unit plus 22 of product A and the contribution margin will be 15. So the maximum profit I can achieve based on this combination will be 570. If you tried any other methods, any other combination, you cannot reach 570. So the maximum I can achieve is 570. Let's now move to the third decision, make or buy decision. Let's read this example. S Limited needs a component of one of its products. It can outsource production of the component to a subcontractor who will provide the component for 20 pound each. S Limited can produce the component internally for a total variable cost of 15 pound per component. S Limited has a spare capacity, which is very important. That means I don't need any fixed cost. Should the component be subcontracted or produced internally? So now I have to compare the price outside is 20. And if I would like to produce it, it will only cost me 15 pound. So in that case, of course, I will produce it internally. Why? Because the only cost I need is 15 pound. So why I need to pay 20? I will pay only 15. So in that case, my decision is to produce the component internally. Let's change one thing in that example. Let's say that we don't have spare capacity. So what should happen? Let's read this example. So now assume that S Limited has no spare capacity that can only produce the component internally by reducing the output of another of its product. While it is making each component, it will lose contribution of 12 pounds from the other product. So now we have opportunity cost. We have to take it into consideration when I make this issue. So my decision in that case will be, if I decide to produce it internally, I need 15 pound as a variable cost, and I will use the chance of producing another product which achieve 12 pound. So in that case, the total cost will be 15 pound plus the opportunity cost 12, so it will be 27. Now I compare 27 with 20, the external price. So of course, I will ask subcontractor to produce it. Let's now move to the last decision, closing or continuation decision. Again, remember, our magic word is contribution margin. If it's positive, do it. If not, don't do it. Let's say now that we have three products. The profit achieved for the first one is 41. The profit achieved for the second one is 20. For the third one is negative nine, which is mean loss. So the total profit will be equal 41 plus 20 minus nine, so 52. So now the manager asks you, whether to continue producing C or not. Because of course, if I cancel C, the logic saying, if I cancel C, that means my profit will increase by nine. What should I do? What's your decision? By taking into consideration that the total rent or the fixed cost is 138. This is of course divided by the three products. So what should I do in that case? I need to calculate the contribution margin again. So the sales revenue here in our example, I will take it as it is. Then the fixed cost is 138. This is divided by three, so to be 46 for each product. And the variable cost in that case will be the total cost, which is 482 minus fixed cost 138. So it will be equal 344, the same for A, B, C. So the contribution margin in that case will be 534 minus 344, it's equal 190. 254 minus 167, it's equal 87 and so on. Oh, so by the way, our profit here is still the same, 52. So 41, 29 as the main example. I just calculate the contribution margin. So if you look at C here, the contribution margin is positive. And now the manager asks you whether to continue producing C or not. 
So my decision here will be if contribution margin of C is positive, I will produce it. Otherwise not. Why? Because the 37 add to your profit. It's used to cover your fixed cost. So if you decide not to produce that, that means you lose 37, which can be used to cover your fixed cost. So your profit will decrease by 37. Let's see this. If I decide to produce only A and B, I just added the sales revenue for A and B, the variable cost for A and B, no problem. But here, take care. The fixed cost will be 138. This is now will be divided into two, not three. So 138 divided by 2, 50% A, 50% B, it will be 69, 69. So now my profit in total will be 15. So it's not increased. Actually, it decreased. Why? Because I lost the chance of covering my fixed cost by 37. So now my profit decreased by 37. By the way, if you use your calculator, 52 minus 37, it's equal 15 which is now, this is the contribution margin that C add to my profit. So my decision, of course, not to cancel C and continue producing C because it helped to cover my contribution margin, even if in total it, ha it achieved loss. And this is the main benefit of management accounting. It helped you to make the right decision. Anybody else, of course, would choose to stop producing C because it achieved loss, but this is incorrect. Why? It add to my profit by 37. So my decision is not to withdraw C. I will continue producing C. Could this mean makes profit equal to 52? This is the last decision. Now you need to try to answer these questions again to be ready for any questions in the future. Thank you so much.